Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are in the world, it's Stephen Clark and friends back again. Hope you're all fit and well. We're back with a light-hearted look at news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. So let's have a look at what we got today. China's famed terracotta warriors march into Bangkok. A US woman arrested at Manila Airport with a baby hidden in a bag. A leopard kept as a pet in Jom Tiem upsets the residents. I don't know why. Plane crashes at Sukhothai. Vietnamese airlines to fly direct to the US. But first up, a tourist refuses to pay a bar tab after ringing the bell 20 times. A tourist holidaying in Pattaya refuses to pay 63,000 baht bar fine for drinks. How did his bill get so large when there was only him and his girlfriend drinking? He was ringing the bell and everybody that goes to Thailand and especially Pattaya knows what that bell is for. When you ring the bell, it indicates that you are buying drinks for everyone in the bar that's hostesses and customers. 33-year-old man was out living it up with his girlfriend in, uh, in a bar in Thailand in the Kura Road in Pattaya, where he claimed his bill had been padded when it came time to pay up. He coughed up 9,000 baht, which he deemed a fair amount for what he had ordered. So the management called the police in. So all parties involved went down to the local police station and uh, tried to sort it all out. The man had uh, run up quite a large tab from his bell ringing. The bar owner claims he rang the bell at least 20 times, meaning free drinks for all staff and customers. But the tourist stated that he had no idea ringing that bell. The custom was to uh, shout everybody in the bar a drink. Like I said, everybody that goes to Patia knows exactly what that bell is for. So after some negotiating with uh, the management and police, the man settled on paying another 5,500 baht to settle his large tab and his bell ringing escapade, which had totaled some 53,000 Thai baht. Or 1,700 US dollars, if you like. So the man has ended up paying about 14,000 Thai baht. Instead of the 53,000 baht, he was obligated to pay by ringing the bell 20 times. So now there are a lot of unhappy hostesses who didn't get their 50 baht drink commission. Let me explain something to you. When you're sitting at the bar and there's a bell, you'll see a bell there. If you ring that bell, you have committed yourself to buying all the hostesses and all the customers in that bar a free drink. So the moral to the story, don't ring the bell. Don't touch the bell. Don't, don't even pick it up. And everybody that drinks in those bars and goes to those bars knows what the bell is for. Okay? So don't try the, I didn't know what the bell was for trick because you'll be at the police station and you will pay. Well, most of it anyway. China's renowned terracotta warriors are on their way to Bangkok for an exhibition at the National Museum on Sunday until December the 15th. The 2,700 year old works of art are being put on display in an exhibition entitled Qin Shi Hung, First Emperor of China and the Terracotta Warriors. The exhibition will be divided into four zones from figures from the Han Dynasty, all providing an insight into the Chinese history and culture. Visitors can learn about all of the Chinese technology, along with reforms created by China's first emperor, Qin Shi Hung. This is the guy that built the Great Wall of China. I've actually seen the Terracotta Warriors. Uh, it's quite impressive, actually. Anyway, it's all on its way to Bangkok for you to enjoy. Or if you'd like to see it now, head down to Pattaya and go to the Wee Hung Sing Temple. So they're there now. And I would say that's where some of the displays are from. Johnny, so I am reporting. Carry on baggage has taken a whole new level. A 42 year old, Jennifer Tolbert, an American woman, tried to smuggle a six day old baby boy out of the Philippines at Manila Ninoy Aquino International Airport on Wednesday. 
She managed to get through security and immigration. At the boarding gate, she was confronted by personnel there at the final check before boarding the flight out of Manila. The child, which she had in like a lap type bag around her midsection, is now in the hands of welfare services. The birth mother came from the south and has been flown to Manila for guidance, counselling and further investigation. Ms Talbot has been charged with human trafficking and could see a prison stint in the Philippines for decades. The investigation also continues. Thank you. Johnny out. Now here's an interesting story. There's a couple in Patia, in John TM actually, that have actually got themselves a pet leopard. Apparently it's absolutely legal. It's the family pet and they have it in their home. So reporters of Pop Run House in um, Patia, where the Thai woman and a foreign husband have been keeping the leopard, a very large cat with spots in case you don't know, this week the couple have been slammed on social media for keeping such a dangerous pet. One of those large, strong, carnivorous mammals with huge teeth, believe it or not. A visit from Wild Hawk Animal Authorities last Monday and police declared it was legal. Crikey, so you're allowed to keep anything you like in your home these days in Thailand. The couple who have two leopards in fact and one is being treated for sickness in Chiang Mai, they have moved to Pattaya last week in a rented house. The fully grown leopard at the Pattaya house was four year old and called Typhoon. Animal rights activist Edwin Wick described it potentially as dangerous. The couple have since been ordered to complete documentation about the animal and lodge it with the she Racha office and to improve fed security at the property and they are allowed to keep the leopard wow so if you fancy a bit of dangerous pussy now you know where to go off to john tm with you then i don't know how much the bar fine is but i should think it's going to be pretty expensive mark reporting for talk about thailand good day there's an old saying in the aircraft business what goes up must come down. And it's especially true when your motor quits and you're in a home-built um, kit aeroplane like a CH701. This aircraft recently found this out while flying from Lumpun to Summit Sakon. And it came down in a rice paddy in Sukhothai and, well, didn't land so well. She's flipped over. Here's the actual aircraft um, seen in Pattaya, beautiful Pattaya in 2004 and here it is again, it looks refurbished in uh, last year, the end of last year. We can see here there's several hundred CH701s have been built and um, quite a few of them have been destroyed. Um, that's the nature of the home built light aircraft uh, seen on the parade. The actual aircraft's quite an amazing machine um, when the motor's working. So we can see from this uh, short landing, it's quite amazing. And equally so, um, when the motor does cut out, there's an example of uh, how the aircraft should be landed as a glider, I guess. But then again, landing in a rice paddy or uh, nearby a rice paddy, uh, is fraught with danger and uh, let's be thankful that no one was injured in the air crash and uh, the incident. It's just one of those things. Vietnam Airlines is the first courier in the country to secure a coveted license to fly direct to the US. Great news for Vietnam, Vietnamese Airlines has been licensed to fly from Hanoi and the southern business hub Ho Chi Minh City to Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Seattle and Dallas, according to the regulatory filing from the US Department of Transportation. Non-stop services to cut travel time to San Francisco by 8 hours. Vietnamese aviation sector has soared in recent years with passenger numbers jumping from 25 million in 2012 to 62 million last year. The US market is a big bet for Vietnam Airlines, which will face tough competition from established hub carriers in Taiwan, South Korea and China. Many Vietnamese airlines are eager to exploit a fast-growing market for air travel among Vietnamese booming middle class. Economic ties between the two countries have been growing steadily in recent years. The US is the largest market for Vietnamese made goods, home to 2 million Vietnamese expats. The Southeast Asian country's biggest budget courier also struck a 5.3 billion deal with GE for aircraft engines and maintenance service. 
And meanwhile, Bamboo Airways, a new carrier launched in January, also signed a contract to buy Boeing 787S worth more than $2.9 billion. President Trump hailed the deals, saying, Moving forward as partners, we will achieve great prosperity and success for the American people and for the Vietnamese people. Fantastic. Domestic and regular air travel has mushroomed among Vietnamese travellers and careers are hoping the market will extend to the US travel too. It would be very cool to see Vietnamese airlines flying to the US, something that's only sustainable thanks to the new ultra fuel efficient planes being produced by Airbus and Boeing. That being said, Vietnam is generally a pretty low yield destination, so they'd have a very hard time turning a profit on a route like this, even with high loads and a fuel efficient plane. It's interesting to see the number of new flights that airlines in Southeast Asia want to launch to the US. Garuda Indonesia, Thai Airways, Singapore Airlines all want to add further flights to the US. What do you make of Vietnam Airlines starting flights between the US and Vietnam? Leave your comments below.